Hey what's up guys in today's video we'll be taking a look at uh, quantum computers uh, some connections that quantum computers have to CERN uh, and a couple of other recent uh, reports and information in the news uh, in regards to quantum computers and uh, the uh, recent rise in the use uh, or, or race for quantum computers um, their connection to uh, different projects at CERN and you know possible uh, implications uh, that this might have in terms uh, of uh, you know potential end time events and um, you know ultimately for humanity in general there was an article that was released on Forbes magazine uh, Forbes.com recently and uh, it's titled very strange and fascinating ideas behind IBM's quantum computer and um, you know, as I mentioned there's been a real push uh, a real race to develop a quantum computer and you really have to wonder exactly uh, why there's such a push uh, and drive for this technology uh, being able to solve complex uh, complex calculations um, doing these complex calculations simultaneously uh, getting results much faster uh, than you would with a conventional computer uh, so it does outline some of those things and it also talks about uh, challenging uh, some of Einstein's early theories uh, you know in terms of physics and uh, ultimately quantum mechanics and so it's really um, interesting to see this major push that we uh, that we're seeing right now for the development of a quantum computer uh, this article uh, that was released I believe in May of this year uh, is talking about uh, IBM quantum computing power uh, this article talks about Jerry Chow who is um, a manager or manages IBM's quantum computing group uh, at uh, York uh, and it starts out by saying Chow's computer stands out because it has uh, it's chilled by liquid helium uh, his superconducting processor uses quantum physics to circumvent the rules of everyday reality that limit the power of conventional computers um, so again it, you know the uh, the reason I wanted to point out uh, IBM uh, is because uh, anytime you know, uh, I see IBM you know it's difficult for me to think about them um, without thinking of their connections to Hitler and the Holocaust um, you know there was uh, research done it's been documented that there were uh, in fact connections between the uh, punch card system and the tracking that was used by Adolf Hitler in you know Nazi Germany concentration camps and things uh, this book uh, as listed on Wikipedia IBM and the Holocaust uh, does point out those connections between Hitler and the powerful computing system and what was taking place um, if I'm not mistaken I believe there was some type of number system that was used in conjunction uh, with the, t the uh, same type of punch card system that IBM uh, had employed for their early computers uh, so we're looking at numbering people uh, and being able to track those people based on those numbers uh, and this would be you know something similar uh, placed on the arm uh, and again identifying this particular individual uh, I think I also saw a documentary where they talked about being able to identify uh, those who potentially maybe were sick and, the, and things of that nature and uh, being able to keep track of the people in the concentration camps and so it's interesting to see situations like that uh, that have direct connections to computers computing power uh, you know you know ultimately uh, controlling um, and manipulation of people uh, but you know all all this had me thinking um, reminded me of something there was a movie uh, that came out in 2003 and the movie was called Paycheck and that movie starred Ben Affleck 
and Uma Thurman. And I'm not sure if you guys have seen that movie or not. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll try not to spoil it for you. But uh, basically, uh, the character uh, portrayed by Ben Affleck he is an engineer that works for a company. Uh, he does these jobs, and the jobs last a certain length of time. And at the end of the job, he receives a paycheck. Um, but they're not necessarily uh, directly clear on the type of work that he's doing. Um, and at the end of each job that he completes, he goes through a memory wipe process where they actually go in and remove the memories uh, of the job. So he doesn't know exactly what it is he's been doing. And he also does not know the finished product. Uh, but ultimately, through this movie, uh, they point out some interesting things. Um, they do have um, uh, the opening of some type of portal. And this portal is also able to um, either predict or allow them to see into the future. And one of the things pointed out by um, Ben Affleck's character is uh, you know predicted outcomes and so if you're looking at uh, quantum computing and you're thinking of, about running complex calculations uh, being able to uh, solve problems um, again that's that's something that's very useful you can see you know the the, the benefits of that um, in just general terms uh, I guess if a person was planning maybe some type of trip and you had various uh, stopping points or various uh, maybe uh, destinations along the way, uh, landmarks, different things like that, that, that you, maybe there's different routes that you could take. Uh, you want to see which one is going to, you know, uh, maybe take you the, the, the fastest way, maybe use the, the cheapest uh, or, or the least amount of gas. You can do GPS and you can run those various things like that. And you could see which one would be most beneficial, um, you know, a similar example in the quantum computer, you could run those things simultaneously and you could get almost instant feedback as to what would be the best route, the most efficient, or whatever it was you were trying to determine. Um, and so he talks about the possibility of uh, being able to see into the future through this portal and people actually causing the outcome uh, of these things by seeing into the future, uh, ultimately handing over their lives to the power of, of this machine uh, and then losing any type of uh, free will and predict un unpredictability about life. Um, he points out, uh, for example, uh, maybe one country, uh, the machine predicts a possible war. And, you know, a country is going to perform a strike on this other country. And so this other country then performs a preemptive strike to avert that attack and war. And so ultimately you end up going to war anyway. Um, you know, perhaps you have people who are, um, you know, sick and uh, maybe the machine predicts that there's going to be uh, an epidemic. And so, uh, you know, people in seeing that start to take that to the extreme. We have people who are displaying some type of sign of sickness or maybe just, uh, you know, uh, the combat being taken to the extreme, those people are herded together, and then ultimately, in doing so, you've you've you know essentially caused uh, uh, an outbreak or a pandemic. And so, it's pretty interesting uh, to think about um, uh, the information through this movie. Again, uh, you know, 2003, and I did see that movie shortly after it came out, and I did not see it uh, in the same light at that time, obviously. So seeing it here in 2016 uh, made a big difference as I, I went back to look at that movie. So if you guys haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things there, a lot of things to consider, I think, in connections with uh, some of the things that we're seeing right now actually play out. Um, and there also um, is a um, subtle reference in one of the scenes to, uh, to the planet Saturn. Uh, it does show a, um, a palm reading. And the area apparently of the palm or, or near the fingers, uh, and it has a reference to Saturn there. <clears throat> and I thought that was also uh, pretty interesting um, because we know it's been uh, mentioned 
Uh, if you uh, are familiar with uh, Anthony Patch and his work, and he talks about the connections with, uh, between CERN and Saturn, uh, and that's something that's also kind of hinted at through this movie. So, you know, you're looking at the, the connections there uh, to Saturn uh, and, you know, the possibility of maybe CERN really trying to uh, open up some type of portals, uh, you know. But uh, the, the Saturn connection is really interesting. Um, you know, it's something that we can also find, uh, I think, also connected to Adolf Hitler. Uh, I took a look at um, information with Hitler recently, and, of course, we know that Adolf Hitler... Uh, as we talked about, had the tattooing system. Uh, and then also something that I stumbled across in terms of uh, Adolf Hitler's horoscope uh, and outlining what had been happening at that time, uh, which led to the rise, uh, the rise to power that we saw. And we've got the mentioning of Saturn, the death of Adolf Hitler, uh, the Saturn opposite the moon. It also talks about Saturn, uh, its alignment with Mars. Um, and so that's pretty interesting. It's there. Uh, we know that Adolf Hitler also had the uh, Or Black Sun. And the, uh, you know, occult and uh, esoteric connections there. Um, this website um, is pointing out just that type of information. Uh, you know, Heinrich Himmler and the uh, occult warship that was basically, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they pretty much... Um, created the situation where this would be a requirement for the SS soldiers to be open to these type of beliefs uh, and the occult connections that were there with Nazi Germany. Um, and so, you know, we've got a lot of interesting things happening here. Um, you know, these connections uh, that I've pointed out and interesting things there about the movie uh, but CERN is, you know, making progress. Uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, still finding different things, uh, still producing uh, results from the experiments that they have. Um, this particular picture is a depiction of uh, the Black Sun uh, with Adolf Hitler. And uh, you can see the swastika that you can make out through that particular uh, image there. But, you know, CERN continuing to... Um, produce results from their experiments and uh, this is something that I came across this was a uh, you know a CERN bulletin that was apparently given out um, you know about a conference uh, that they were holding and this is talking about the potential of the quantum computer and it outlines uh, how at this point the quantum computer was actually just very young that they only had some small prototypes uh, but this professor from Yale was actually coming into Geneva to do a conference and talk about the power of quantum computers there with CERN. Um, the interesting thing about this particular pamphlet, uh, uh, this bulletin, and when this conference was being held was actually in March of 2006. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, 10 years ago, discussing quantum computers with CERN. Uh, you know, fast forward to 2016 and we see fully operational uh, the CERN facility finding new particles uh, X particles giving some you know at least some credibility uh, to the possible existence uh, of multiple universes and string theory uh, and again you know guys if if you know if the scientific community I think is committed to this I think that they believe that there um, are more things to be discovered about the universe and indeed there probably are um, but you know the interesting thing um, that uh, that I wanted to point out about this whole CERN and in this research um, initially as far as I understand uh, they were looking to find the God particle that was the most recent um, goal that they had um, you know, the supposed Higgs Boston, I believe is how it's pronounced. And um, ultimately, they apparently found that particle. Uh, and, and that's been, I think, a couple years ago now. And continuing to move forward, they're continuing to push forward, and they're continuing to make new discoveries. And so if you're trying to figure out exactly more information about the Big Bang, 
um, and you've discovered the article, um, obviously, you know, there's numerous things to discover, and I'm no scientist. You have to wonder exactly where they are going with these experiments. Uh, what exactly is it that they're wanting to um, Is there one definitive, total, complete explanation for the universe that you can find by using giant magnets and slamming particles into each other? Um, maybe. Uh, but, you know, being this far away, you know, from the discovery of the God particle, as they call it, um, I think we need to strongly consider that they really are doing uh, something, uh, you know, that, uh, that that may turn out to be quite a bit more sinister than we wanted to believe. And uh, again, with the bulletin that we looked at that was back in 2006 talking about the quantum computers, um, the CERN bulletin here, and, you know, we're 10 years ahead of this, uh, you know, so the idea and the connection with CERN and quantum computers is not anything new. Uh, we've got this consistent push uh, from various companies uh, competing, trying to get this technology to um, You know, it's difficult to look at these things, um, talk about the uh, understanding of the universe and reaching the expanses of the universe. And... Uh, you know, not see the implications for uh, potential danger. And so, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, I think it will be uh, wise to keep our eyes on this and to, uh, you know, keep looking to see if we can, uh, you know, continue to find different things. Uh, you know, ultimately, as we, as we pay closer attention, uh, we see a lot of times that they don't necessarily hide the paycheck 2003 uh, is this an example of hidden in plain sight uh, you know are we are we really on the verge of opening up portals and being able to see into the future um, the mandela effect that everyone's experiencing right now uh, have we uh, actually used quantum computers to unlock some type of um, time shift or to be able to you know pull information in from some other dimension you know it all sounds pretty crazy it all sounds pretty far-fetched um, but there's definitely support for it from the scientific community and uh, you know I think as long as that remains the case and as long as CERN continues to operate forward and move forward and continues to make more discoveries uh, that we've got to keep these things on the table and uh, give consideration to the possibility um, that, you know, there's, uh, you know, something on the other side of the veil, uh, something out there that they're really trying to make contact with. Um, you know, there is a consistent reason for their action. And um, so that's basically it, guys. Uh, you know, this particular movie, The Paycheck, I think you'll find that on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you can't locate it on YouTube, maybe try Netflix. Uh, but take a look at that movie again. Uh, you know, there's lots of information there that I did not see in 2003 when I saw that movie. But uh, thinking about all of this information and looking at it in 2016, put it in a whole different light. And I think we've got some interesting things going on with CERN. I think we've got some major connections uh, to these quantum computers. And it's difficult to say that this doesn't have some type of bearing or implications on what we're going to see in the future uh, in terms of humanity. Uh, hopefully the intentions will stay good. We can use these computers for positive things. Uh, but uh, you know what happens uh, when, when we get to uh, this type of power and uh, what the capability is behind these computers and uh, you know the consistent uh, desire uh, to ultimately have that power and to have that control. Uh, so we'll see exactly how everything plays out. Uh, but let's keep our eyes focused on them and uh, try to pay close attention to what they're doing and see if we can discover some real truth about what goes on at that facility and the real truth behind this consistent push and, and drive to try to create these quantum computers. Um, that's it for now, guys.